Hello, you're here with Julie Powell. I'm just going to take you on a run through on how I created Tiny Rabbits. I started off with this, the main shot, which is a composite I made in another document which I just brought over, which is a room at the Mayday Hills Asylum in Beechworth. I've got the main walls with the windows and I added in at the floor and extended the roof line so that you have more of the room. I then put in another one of the images I've used before which is the sky and just the grass but of course I want to be able to see the building through this so I've put on a layer mask and just brushed out uh, a lot of the middle bit not all of it but most of it's been masked out so you can see the windows and the wall a little bit of the uh, floor and the ceiling but you can still of course see the grass and the clouds. I then of course added in another layer of clouds just to, to build it up a little bit. Then I come through and I added in my model. This is a wonderful image uh, by Colby Files on a lovely white background so it was quite a simple extraction process. I just went in and used the quick selection tool and went through and selected the whole model that I wanted and put it on a layer mask. Uh, you can then go through with the layer mask if you like and you can refine your edge by selecting your smart radius and your brush and you can go along and pick up any of the fine hairs you may have missed um, and various other bits and pieces that may have been missed or you want to add in. And of course being a layer mask you can also go in with your brush and you can brush in um, extra bits and pieces you may or may not want. I then anchored my model with a slight shadow just in the, the clouds here. I then went through and started with the ribbons. Now each of these ribbons is done the same way, it's just on white. So I've just gone through and extracted the background. You can use a colour range or your um, quick selection. Any of those will do. You can go through and pop it that way. I also did on each of these, I put a drop shadow. Now with the drop shadow, if you go in through your FX of blend, blend and um, select what you want. You can then go and put this on a different layer so that you can move it around, soften it off, put another blend to it. Um, you can put a blur on it, etc, etc, which is what I did to pretty much most of these. So each single one of these has got their own shadow to go with it. Um, then I put another gradual shadow that I built up through here as well and I did a little bit of a, a dodge and burn on her to increase some of the shadows where I thought they would be placed because of where the ribbon is sitting. Um, so that's where we've gone th to there. Then I've come through and I've created the hole uh, which is two ellipses. There's a grey one which I have given an inner shadow, an outer glow and a drop shadow. And then the next one is a black one which has got an inner glow and a drop shadow. Then I've placed a light which is actually a brush. I've got some various brushes which I can use to create light. Such as like this. You can go in, just put another light over the top, select whatever colour you want, change it to soft light. 
and you can lower the opacity. Now, I actually did two of them because one wasn't quite enough but two was too much so I just dropped the opacity on that one. So I put them all in a folder and then of course I put a mask on the folder and what I have actually done, if I can go in here, using another little brush that I've got which is a grass brush, I went along and I have painted some of that edge back in. So if I disable the mar mask, it's just sitting there on top of the grass. If I put the bass back on, that actually paints in through the ellipses to the grass beneath it and makes it look like it's sitting in the grass. I've then gone and put in the window lights which same again is just using a light brush and I've put them in through there and I've put them at soft light at 50%. Then I added in the rabbits, which is essentially the same rabbit in all occasions. I've just masked out the area that I didn't want and he's just sitting already in some grass. So I've just put a little drop shadow on each one of these and that's the rabbit. So I've just moved him around, made him a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, etc, etc. Then I added in the birds in the background which is all the way down the bottom there and then I also put in the top ribbon which ties my model to the hole and I've put in some shadows on that one as well and that pretty much takes us to the all the bits that need to be added to it I've then gone in through Topaz Adjust and done a HDR Bright Pop just to bring all the colours out. I then did another copy and I ran that through Topaz Impressions and I did a Monet, try again, Monet inspired uh, artistic painting over the top of that but it's, it's a little much. So I've dragged it back down to 25%. It was still a little bit too much on the model skin, so I masked it out and brought that right down as well. Um, then I merged it all and I did a little move that I, I learnt from Rusty McDonald actually, which is put a, a, just a slight blur on it, um, add a curves layer which makes it a little bit brighter than you would normally have it and also a hue saturation layer that drags all the saturation down a bit all of the colors just keep it on master pop that in a folder copy that and call this one dark and it's exactly the same thing but instead of the curves layer being bright you take it down a bit darker than you would normally have it now both of these are set to soft light and around 20-25% and it just gives subtle but a really nice tone for the whole thing. Then I'll come through to my final tones and textures and there's quite a bit in here. Um, so I add a curves layer. just to, to bring it all down because it was getting just a little bit too bright. Then add in another curves layer where I actually adjust all the individual colours. So if you go in and you look at I've brought the blues up and the yellows up as well, um, adjusted the greens and also um, left the reds pretty much where they were but brought the cyan into it. Um, then I did another solid colour layer which is a dark blue um, navy layer. If you look at that on normal it's just really dark blue but if you set that to lighten um, that lightens off all the shadows. So instead of being black it has a slight tinge of, of blue to it just to soften it up and give it more of a fantasy feel. I added in some more clouds. 
I then added in a texture, um, I think it might be two little owls, um, set that to soft light. It was still a bit too bright down the bottom here so I added in a gradient just to darken up the sky a little bit. Then I brought in another texture um, which is predominantly a black texture. Um, it's a concrete type thing. Um, anything that's got black in it, of course, if you set to screen mode, the black pretty much disappears and you're left with what's left. Um, I thought that it was still a bit too strong, so I dragged that down. I think it was about 35%. Um, then Silver Wings is another texture that I use all the time. Love it. Um, it gives a lovely canvas type feel to it. Um, just set on soft light and just adjust that to, to how much texture that you want to put into it. Then I did another hue saturation level and just bringing it all down a little bit. It was getting a bit bright. Just a basic S curve just to give it a bit more pop in the contrast. Then I did another, I did a vignette. Um, using an S curve as well. If you've never done that before, just go into a new layer and pick the ellipses tool. Set your feather to about 250% depending on uh, pixels, depending on how big your image is. If you go in and create an ellipses, go into inverse so that selecting all outside of the ellipses you then go into your curves and bringing your shadows down that will create your your ellipse your vignette so it's just a matter of moving it around to to what you're happy with um, and you can also set it to multiply mode which just makes it a, a tends to work in a bit better so I'll just get rid of those two that I did. Um, so that gives you your vignette. Then I just did another straight curves layer set to soft light and I brought that down to about 25%. At 100% it's just a bit too dark. At 25 it just blended it all in quite nicely. Then I did a gradient fill which was black and blue through to, to white, which was just one of the standard ones in, in Photoshop actually. Um, set that to soft light and again brought that down to about 39-40% because it was just a bit too sort of green. Then I did a sepia photo filter over the top at about 50%. Then I did a black and white layer. Now this, if you leave it just as normal, it will turn your image black and white. But if you switch it to a luminosity blend mode, it then allows you to adjust the luminosity only without having to affect any of the color. So you can you can bump your, your reds up or down or you can decide you know sort of what you want you can go through and do all everything in the spectrum the reds yellows greens etc etc that's quite a good way to tone and soften your image as you go through and that's pretty much about it once you've done that you can just do a clone stamp and merge it all onto its own layer and then it's just a matter of putting my logo on and that's it so I hope you uh, have learnt something that you can use in your own work and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.